Hi everyone, I wanted to offer you some information about um, the grading or the grades that you'll see updated in D2L. I didn't want you to see those and kind of freak out uh, without a bit of an explanation. So I'm going to walk you through a few things first and then I'll get into some details uh, about the grading itself. So the first thing I wanted to touch base about was just generally I'm getting some questions and concerns about you know, keeping up with the course, am I doing everything okay? Um, and, you know, overall, if you're completing everything on a weekly basis, yeah, you're doing everything okay, you're doing things well, uh, but if you're taking more than one class, it can, it can feel like a lot. It can feel like uh, you have due dates all the time at different times, different expectations. Um, I understand. So what I wanted to provide is just a few options for how to maybe keep on top of things. And so what I'm going to show you first is um, a calendar, a sample calendar that I'll post on D2L for you. So um, I will post this um, and it's just one option. And then I'll show you how I keep myself organized, which doesn't always work. But, you know, we if we have good intentions, that's a good place to start. So here is a calendar that's just a template through Microsoft Word. Um, and what I've done is I've set it up for next week, just if you want to, you know, kind of experiment, see if this is, um, you know, if this is structured in a way that is helpful to you. So you'll notice that on Monday I've put that, you know, okay, I'm going to check D2L if I were you. Um, I'm going to check D2L for the prompts and videos. I just want to get a sense of what my week looks like. Some of you may have this set aside for a different time, um, but those things are usually posted and available on Mondays, um, mostly 8 a.m. Sometimes it's been a little later. Um, so that may be something that you want to start scheduling in that time, right? Um, if you have other courses, then you can just fill in the lines here for Monday. Um, I, there's a column here for due dates, Tuesday. Um, and then I've put in for at least our class that Wednesday we typically have an assignment. It's due by 11.59 p.m., right? And then Friday. So for this upcoming week, uh, you have your reading response, which is due on Friday. But then additionally, you need to respond to two of your colleagues from your reading journal. I'm sorry, your writing journal, right? So um, this is just kind of a way for you to, if you are a check off or strike through person, you know, you can check this out if you print or if you have the electronic version, whatever. Um, and then for Saturday and Sunday, maybe it's just kind of take a look at the syllabus and see what's ahead. So this is just kind of a basic schedule that just shows, you know, a to-do list, essentially, the things that you need to do every week. Um, I don't work very well that way because a lot of times um, I'm not scheduling in the time that it takes to complete some of these kinds of things. So I'm going to pull up my calendar just to give you an idea of how I function. And this may be, you know, more to uh, your liking if you weren't kind of into the last option. And what I do is because I use Apple products, um, I have iCalendar. And so I have this set up, let me pull it down, um, and this is just kind of general, right? Um, so you'll see that, you know, I have everything color coded <laughs> just because it's fun. It's really not because at a glance I know that green means this or blue means that. It's just, it's, it's differentiating those different kinds of tasks and responsibilities. Um, so you'll note that, um, you know, I have things broken down every day. And y'all, I, I can't emphasize this enough. It seems corny, but you need to, if this is more of, you know, what you dig when it comes to potentially scheduling, you need to set aside time for those kinds of basic things, like even waking up, getting ready. Um, if you have travel time, uh, you need to build that in. When I was going to campus more, I would build in the travel time, because especially in Houston, that is time that you aren't really able to do other things. Um, so you don't want to look at your schedule and go, oh, I seem to have all this time, but I'm not getting anything done. When in reality, you have quite a bit that you're doing. It just seems like a mundane task. Like, why would I put that in my calendar? Well, this is why. So you have a really good sense of when your time is available to do classwork or other things, right? Um, so I have things kind of structured in this way. I have my office hours. I have a break for lunch. Um, and note that this is something that's going to change. So if you notice on Thursday, I have a meeting that's set up for 4 p.m., which means that I have to move down my email time. Um, and as the days go by, I have to make shifts and adjustments. And with iCalendar, you know, it's just you can move and change the times. Um, if you have a smartphone of any kind, you likely have uh, a built-in calendar application or app 
that you can kind of play with. Um, and this is really good because when I when I was in college, especially when I was in my, my graduate program, I was really of the mind of, you know, I don't have the time. I don't have time to get any of this done. I'm feeling overwhelmed. But I even though it was painful, I sat down with an academic coach um, who was a friend and she was very gentle um, in talking me through this. And she said, you know, you do have the time. It's just about how you're choosing to spend your time. And so I was saying, well, I'm up until two in the morning grading and prepping and doing all this stuff. And she says, well, let's find time before that where you can get stuff done. And so she forced me to, in 10 minute gaps, fill in my entire day. Y'all, that was one of the most painful things I've been through because my mind does not, if I, that was just too much for me. I went and laid on her couch for a while, um, was a big baby, having a near temper tantrum, but it really put into focus the time I have to get things done and then the time that I can have set aside to binge watch Netflix, to go for a walk, to do something with family. You know, you... If you see it and you see how your week is structured, it can really give you a sense of, okay, I do have time, but I have to spend it in the right way. And maybe this week is going to be way more intense than next week because of uh, the different things that are due, right? So what I also want you to know is that, you know, every Sunday after I kind of get through working um, for the classes, I set aside some time to do my planning so I can look ahead and say, okay, I know I have a meeting on this date, so I need to shift some things around. Um, this, I, I may have a pending meeting on Friday, so maybe I'll put that in. Um, and especially for those of you who have work schedules that fluctuate, um, having that weekly plan kind of updated is going to be key. And as students, you'll want to put in due dates, right? So if you are constantly, you know, waiting until the last minute to do our Wednesday night posts, then start on Tuesday. Put a time set aside on Tuesday to just work on it, not to necessarily submit it, but just to get it started. Or if you keep forgetting to do the readings for maybe a Friday post, set aside some time in here during the week, right? You know, whether you're doing that in this way, so maybe if you want to prepare your reading for Friday, you set aside some time on Thursday. Okay, so this is just, you know, the basics of kind of getting organized. I don't want you to look at my calendar and think, oh my gosh, that's too much. Because for some of you, it might be. It just depends on how you process information. It took me a really long time to get to a point where this was comfortable. Every time I look at it, I still get a little nervous and a little anxious, right? But maybe just start in something like this. There are plenty of templates out there if you want to explore, you know, different options. Okay, so that's just something to kind of go over, you know, different methods to maybe help with organization and time management, because I know that that can be really hard, um, especially now with so many online courses, and we're getting to a point in the semester where um, a lot of due dates are coming up. So our class is pretty steady, but you have probably other classes that are getting a little bit more intensive, and um, having some sort of set plan is, is going to be key. So I'm going to pull up D2L so we can talk through the grades and that information. So this is, you know, what D2L looks like. And in this section up here, you'll notice that one of the tabs is for grades. Okay. Um, you may have been in here and noticed that I entered quite a few, right? We have, we've, we've gone through quite a bit of work so far. Um, some of them have just been five points, 10 points here or there. Um, again, they'll get a little bit more intensive as we get into the semester. But what I really want you to know is that if you see a dash like you do here, it means that the grades have not been entered yet. So a lot of times I get very panicked emails or um, notes from students who are kind of freaking out about their grades because they know they turned something in, but it, you know, it's a zero. This, this isn't a zero. This just means it hasn't been input yet. The only time it will appear as a zero is with, with the actual numeral, right? The actual number zero. So don't freak out too much. Um, I will always keep a running tally of your semester grade, but what I really want to emphasize, so I'm looking at you right now, what I really want to emphasize is that we are still in the phase where we're doing a lot of the daily and weekly kind of work. So what your grade may look like now, whether it's wonderful, awesome, or whether it's not so great, that's only going to be reflective of those smaller daily grades that we have. 
once we get into those larger assignments, that's when things, when your semester grade and how it appears in that grade book is going to get a little bit more important. So I don't want you to freak out now by what you see because we're just barely into these assignments. We're still into those daily grades and everything. I want you to note too that some grades are just kind of completion. Did you do it? Did you do you know most of the assignments? Yes, I check it off the list. Um, and then those that I'm really digging into and seeing like, did you follow the prompt? Did you answer everything thoroughly? Did you revise and edit? Revise and edit. Um, did you did you meet the guidelines that are specified in the rubric for the discussion posts, right? Um, so for those, you will see, you know, a very specific grade, um, but you can also go back into the discussion area and see if I provided you with some feedback. I will respond to your post and just say, hey, this is looking great, or hey, you know, um, you might want to consider doing this in the future. And y'all, again, tone is really important, but sometimes I miss the mark. I'm not perfect. Um, so please, when you read my feedback, do not infer that there is a harsh or judgmental tone there. Um, I'm really just providing that information to you so that you can think about those things in the future. Okay, so there's no judgment. There's no, you know, I am I'm really not trying to be, you know, you know, um, shaking my finger at you and punishing you i meant i meant it with love i mean it with love in terms of the grading so don't don't worry too much about um reading that that feedback because my tone is really just meant to be helpful okay um i wanted you to note that it's at this point you know where we are it's too late to to do the survey and email assignments from the very first week which kind of spilled over into our second week those are smaller grades if you missed it chances are it's really not going to impact your overall grade because they are very small grades. There may be some points down the line when I offer some sort of grade makeup assignment, so keep an eye out for that. But for now, please don't stress about that. It's it's going to be okay. Okay. Um, before you email me or freak out about your grades, I need you to ask yourself a few questions. Um, so the first is going to be, did I follow the prompt? Did I read through the prompt and did I answer every single aspect of it? Um, with some of the grades I was seeing, you hit that, that first requirement in the prompt and then that was it. Uh, maybe you forgot to ask questions of one another. Maybe you forgot completely to respond to some colleagues. Maybe your response to colleagues was really basic and not very thoughtful. I'm grading a little bit more easily right now because again, we're getting used to all of this, but in the future, you need to take your responses to one another seriously and not just say, hey, that's cool, I agree. You agree with what? What? Get into it. This is a writing class. We want to engage with one another in a writing format, okay? Um, so did I follow the prompt? Did you submit on time? Uh, did you respond to colleagues if it was necessary? Go back to that discussion rubric and see if you met those requirements, okay? So before you email me and freak out or need to meet with me for office hours, um, these are questions you have to ask, okay? Um, just because you can figure out some of the stuff on your own without, you know, having a freak out session. Sometimes it's very, it's uh, very apparent once you've had some time and you then go back and look at what you've submitted. Um, so those are just a couple of things. I'm looking at a list now, so I'm just making sure that I that I hit everything. Um, and y'all, one last important thing before I let you go, um, and this is something that Irvin kind of covered in his text. A lot of college work is really just you can do well if you follow the directions, right? So if you follow the prompt or if you have followed the instructions. Uh, to the best of your ability, you're going to do well, right? It's a lot of times when um, students panic, they, they rush through the directions, they submit the wrong assignment, they do the wrong thing, um, then they send emails that are panicked about that. And so it becomes this kind of um, stress cycle, right? So just think about the fact that a lot of our college assignments, not just for this class, but for most, are really just kind of you know, if you follow the directions and instructions, you're well on your way to a good grade. OK, so just make sure that you're taking the time to uh, to double check those kinds of things. And that's why I supply the rubrics and um, and the grade sheets and all that kind of stuff. And 
I hope all your other instructors do, but in reality, I know that's not always going to happen. Uh, but that's as a student, it's your right to ask about that information of all your professors. OK, um, so I hope this helps. Please don't freak out, but I'm going to start posting the grades. And I just wanted to give you a little bit of heads up. But y'all, you're doing great. You're offering really good information um, for one another and you're improving your writing every week. And I see it. OK. All right, y'all hang in there.